Hello and welcome to this video. Today, we'll be going through how you can easily create stylized brush strokes in Mari using brush engine jittering features and brush tip bitmaps. It's important to note that in order to replicate these techniques, you will need to be using Mari 4.8 or later. So, what are these features and how do they work? Well, in Mari, a brush stroke like this will be made up of splats of the same colour, but with the brush engine jittering features that I'm going to show you, you can alter the colour, hue, saturation or value properties of these splats. They can all be accessed in the Tool Properties tab for your brush under the relevant tabs. We can customise their appearance with the range slider and control how they transition between each other with pen pressure. The first of these that we'll be going over is the colour jitter. I'll be using this dragon asset to show you what you can achieve. As you can see, I've already set up some of the base colours that I'm going to be painting the stylize effects on top of. For this project, I'm going to be working in the node graph, but you can just as easily achieve these results working with layers. If you want to learn more about how the node graph works in Mari, head over to our Learn site where you can find resources to help familiarise yourself with the concept. As we know, a brush stroke is made up of lots of individual tip splats that come together to form a stroke. If I adjust the spacing for this brush stroke in the settings, you'll be able to see this in action. But with the colour jitter, if we choose a foreground colour and a background colour, then go into the settings for our brush, navigate to the colour tab and enable jitter per tip, we can start to see how this affects our brush stroke. If I adjust the spacing for this brush stroke in the settings, you'll be able to see this in action. We can adjust how much the two colours jitter by changing the range of our sliders, narrowing or expanding the amount of colours that we're able to switch between. If you use a graphics tablet to paint in Mari, you can also use this jitter in conjunction with the pen pressure function to create and control a gradient between colours all in one stroke. I'm going to select two colours that I want to transition between for our horns here, and then come over to our brush settings and enable pen pressure for this feature with this checkbox. If I start painting, what I'll now be able to do is jitter between the two colours based on how much pressure I apply with my graphics tablet while painting. When I begin to paint here, little to no pressure means that our background colour takes prominence. Whereas when I begin to apply pressure, it induces a gradient toward the foreground colour. If we put this technique into practice on this part of our mesh here, what you're able to achieve is a gradient between our foreground and background colour that is controlled solely by the amount of pressure that we're applying to our pen. These properties and values can require a lot of customization to our brushes, so I'm going to show you how to easily get back to the default settings of our brush. If we go up to our brush settings tab and hit clear brush value settings, it will reset any amendments that you've made to the rotation, tilt, position, radius, or jitter properties of your brush back to the default settings. You can also use clear brush shape settings if you're working with any custom brush tips, which we'll be going over later. Say you want to create a brush stroke that has even more colour variation or randomness. To explore this, we're going to be jittering the hue properties of our brush stroke instead, although we can also use this in conjunction with the colour jitter. This jitter works by taking your foreground colour and randomly shifting its hue. So on our range slider, minus 1 will equal minus 360 degrees of hue shift and plus 1 will equal 360 degrees of hue shift. To demonstrate this, Let's go to our brush settings and under the Hue tab, select Jitter per tip to enable our effect and start painting. You can see at the moment, this stroke has a large variety of colours appearing in it. But if we constrain the minimum and maximum values in our range slider, you'll see that it reduces the number of hues available to us in our stroke. Let's give our dragon some vibrant claws by using this Jitter in tandem with the pen pressure. If we then enable pen pressure using the checkbox in our property settings and make sure that this jitter is selected, we can then better control the degree and direction of the hue shifts in our stroke. I'm just going to constrain these values so we get a more controlled colour progression. 
when I begin to paint and apply pressure, I can return our stroke back towards its original hue by controlling the amount of pressure that I'm applying to the pen. The Saturation Gist tab is a great tool to use when controlling the concentration of a colour in your brush stroke. If there's a particular colour or hue that you want to use for your brush, what this feature will do is jitter along the saturation levels of your colour. If I select this foreground colour here and enable Saturation Jitter per tip and then start to paint across the mesh, you'll be able to see how it's affecting our brush stroke. If I make some adjustments to the spacing, you can see what's happening on a purse flat level as with our hue and colour jitters. The range slider for this feature works on the same logic as a hue slider. So if we're narrowing the ranges, we're also narrowing the amount of saturation levels available to us in our stroke. And just like our other jittering properties, we can enable pen pressure and use it to control the saturation levels of our brush colour. Take for example the bottom of these wings. I use the colour picker tool to select a hue from the wing and then by enabling pen pressure and saturation per tip, I can make this part of the asset appear paler by controlling the saturation levels of this particular colour through pen pressure. The final brush jittering property that we'll be exploring is the value jitter. So if I select a foreground colour here and then head to the value tab, we can see the range that this jitter will be moving in. To put this jitter into full effect, I'm going to be using another jitter type called jitter per stroke. What this means is that instead of randomising the value of our foreground colour within the stroke, the value will change every time we make a new brush stroke. Using jitter per stroke is a really nice way of creating larger scale stylization and blending your strokes together. I'm going to head over to the shelf and select a softer brush tip for a subtle effect between my strokes. Then when I enable pen pressure with this jitter and begin to paint over these ridges here, you can see that for every stroke I'm making, the value is getting lighter or darker, depending on how much pressure I'm applying to my pen. The final thing I'll be going over today is how you can use the new brush tip bitmap settings. Prior to Mari 4.8, you could use and import bitmaps to use as a brush tip, but they needed to be encoded in the alpha channel in order to control the overall shape of your brush tip. But you can now use bitmaps as alphas regardless of what channel your bitmap is encoded in. You can also make use of the red, green or blue colour channels of your bitmap, or use the luminance information generated from these channels. I want to add some extra details to this wing with a custom brush tip, so I'll load in our bitmap by heading to brush settings, expand the brush tip section, and change the source from render to bitmap. This will then allow us to open up an explorer window and select our bitmap. I'm going to load in this image here, and as you can see, it currently does not have an alpha channel, just a white background. Once that's loaded in, I'm going to select luminance mode from the drop down list and enable the invert alpha checkbox. What this is going to do is take the luminance information from our image and convert it to create an alpha channel using the black and white values. If I then begin to paint onto our mesh, you'll be able to see that it's created an alpha for this image directly in Mari. The alpha then adopts whatever colour we've specified as our foreground colour, so if we swap it for something more compatible with our asset and give our tip splat some variation by enabling position, rotation, and hue jitter, we'll be able to give our wings some really nice patterns. Painting with full colour bitmaps is really useful for quickly giving your mesh details or patterns without having to create them directly in Mari. I'm going to introduce some larger scale patterns to this asset around the face and body to demonstrate how textures can quickly be introduced to a mesh. I'm going to load in a different texture brush and change the mode in this drop down menu from luminance to RGBA so I get information from all channels coming in. When using RGBA mode, it's important to ensure the colour space for your bitmap is correctly set. To do this, you can expand the tab below and select the correct colour space from a list of options. If you want to just use the raw data or scalar data from a texture, 
you can do so by enabling the relevant checkbox. If I begin painting on this mesh, you can see that all the colour information from our bitmap is also coming through. As with a normal brush tip, we can adjust the size and spacing of our stroke. One of my favourite things about this feature is that we can also use it in conjunction with the jitter properties that we went through earlier. If I go back to our settings and enable hue jitter per tip, you can see that we're able to jitter the hue of our brush tip, and the same can be applied for colour, saturation and value too, giving you endless possibilities for stylized and abstract strokes. This concludes this session on the brush engine, but as always, you can head over to our Learn site for more information and resources on Mari. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and happy painting.